Hello, welcome to Spin Academy. In this video, we're going to discuss basic DJing with Ableton Live. We'll go over how to create a basic two-deck DJ setup and the steps necessary to get you playing. So let's get it started. By default, Live will open with one audio track and one MIDI track. For our purposes here, you can get rid of the MIDI track by clicking on its title bar and pressing delete. You can then create a new track by going to the Create menu and selecting Insert Audio Track, or simply by pressing Command T. To make it easy to see what you're working on, you can resize the audio tracks by dragging the title bar to the right, and you can rename them Deck A and Deck B by clicking on their title bar, pushing Command R, and then typing in their names. To truly separate these tracks into a two-deck style setup, you want to give each track a crossfader assignment. To do this, make sure the crossfader section is showing by clicking the small X button on the right hand side of the screen. Next, click the A button on deck A and the B button on deck B. On the right hand side, you will see the crossfader. If you right click on it, you will see a menu that allows you to select the crossfader curve type. You can play around with these to see what you like the best, but the one labeled constant power is a good place to start. Now, before you import your songs, there are a couple menu items in your live preferences that you should look at. Go into preferences and then look at the record warp launch section. In the middle, you will see auto warp long samples. Make sure this is turned on. Also, make sure your default warp mode is set to complex. Now that your tracks are created and your preferences are set, it is time to import your songs. There are many ways that you can import songs into Live, but one of the easiest ways is to simply drag and drop them from iTunes. You can import one song at a time, or you can select an entire group of songs and import them all at once. This works great if you create playlists in iTunes and want to use all of the songs in a DJ set. When you import songs for the first time, it will take a couple of seconds for Live to analyze them. You can see the progress of the analysis in each song's clip slot by its changing color. This analysis creates an ASD file that contains data gathered by Live to help optimize the stretching quality, speed up the waveform display, and automatically detect the tempo of long samples. Now that the songs are all imported, you can arrange them in a way that is conducive to two deck mixing. Basically, you want to put half the songs in deck A and the other half in deck B. You can arrange them in a way that looks and feels right for you, but leaving a space between each allows you more freedom to move songs around later and is generally easier to look at. The most important part to DJing in live is warping your audio clips. Warping means changing the speed of sample playback independently from pitch so as to match the song tempo. Basically, when you warp a clip, Live puts virtual pins called warp markers all along the song at key points, such as the hits in a drum track. This creates a grid map of the song. Once this map has been created, you can change Live's global tempo and the song will play back at this tempo while it's still at its original pitch. Since we already set long sample warping on, all of your songs should be warped. If you click on each song and bring up its waveform, you will notice the yellow warp markers at different points along its timeline. While the default warping is accurate most of the time, differences in song structure can sometimes fool it. One of the most common examples is when a song is warped, but all of the song's start points and first warp marker have been placed somewhere other than the first beat. When you are DJing with live in a two-deck setup, you will always want the beginning of your clip to start on a solid downbeat. There are a few easy steps to fix any clip that has a misplaced start position. First, drag the start point icon to the beginning of the song, hit play, and listen for the first beat that you want to play. At this downbeat, double click in the dark gray bar above the waveform to create a new warp marker. If there is a small gray mark, known as a transient marker, near this point, place the warp marker on it. Right click on the warp marker and a menu will appear. Select set 1.1.1 here to set this as your start position. Right click on it again and select warp from here. Now your clip should be fully warped and ready to go. 
Now that your tracks are all arranged and warped, you are ready to start playing. Set your global tempo to something that is appropriate for the genre that you are playing. For example, if you are playing any type of four on the floor music such as house or electro, you will probably want the tempo somewhere between 120 and 130 BPM. If you're not sure what tempo to play, you can find each song's original tempo in its sample display box near its waveform. You will also want to set your global quantization. By default, it will be set to one bar, which means that when you hit play on a clip, it will only play back at intervals of one bar along the global arrangement position. This will be good to use when first getting used to DJing with live, but as you get more experience, you will probably want to change this to an eighth or sixteenth note quantization. To start playback, make sure the crossfader is to the left. You can control a crossfader with your mouse, map it to a MIDI controller, or map it to three separate keys on your keyboard. Hit the play button on the first song you want to play in deck A, and playback should begin. Let this track play out for as long as you want, and when you want to start your next track, hit the play button on that song in deck B. Since you already warped the songs, they should now be playing in sync. To transition between the two tracks, slowly move the crossfader from left to right. This will fade in the new song and fade out the old song. There are many different mixing techniques you can use to transition between songs, but this is one of the easiest to use. Keep doing this between deck A and deck B, and you are now DJing. Now this method works well if you want to always play songs from the beginning, but what if you want to choose different parts of the song to play back, like using cue points? This is fairly easy to accomplish in live. Once your song is warped, create duplicates by pressing Command D. For each duplicate that you create, you'll want to set a new start point, usually at the beginning of a new part in the song structure, such as the verse, chorus, build, or bridge. With your songs arranged in this fashion, you can easily select which part of the track you want to play. This can be used when mixing into a new song or to create remixes on the fly. Another essential part of DJing in this fashion is having effect controls for both decks. You can create your own custom effects using Live's devices, but there are also many presets that have been created exactly for this type of DJing. In the device browser, go to Audio Effects, then Audio Effects Rack, and then Performance and DJ. Within this folder, you will find many preset effects racks that you can use in your setup, but a good one to get started with is the one labeled DJ Master Channel. Drag and drop one of these effects racks onto both Deck A and Deck B. This rack will give you some basic DJ mixer controls such as volume, EQ, reverb, a filter sweep, and some saturation. Play around with these effects during your set to find interesting ways to mix. There's no real right or wrong, just do whatever sounds good to you. You should now be able to play a basic set in Ableton Live using songs from your iTunes folder. Experiment with warping, song transition, and effects usage to find a mixing style that suits you best. Practice makes perfect. So don't be discouraged if you don't sound like your favorite DJ or producer right from the beginning. If you want to learn more, check out some of the other videos we have on spinacademy.com.